Hello, good morning, it's Jake, and I'm coming at you with a little bit of a different video today. You see, when I first started my channel, I wanted to make a video introducing me to my audience, explaining who I am, what I'm doing here, all that kind of stuff. But at the beginning of my channel, honestly, I had nobody watching. Surprise, surprise. Um, but after yesterday's live stream, I had a surprising amount of turnout, more people than I was expecting, despite it being four people. But that was enough of a signal to me to sit my ass down, finish this video. Now, a lot of the reason why I haven't finished this video yet is because I wanted to do a lot of special effects and overlaying oh, stuff and, and all that kind of stuff, but um, I don't think that's necessary here. I don't think you need to see special effects to get an idea for who I am, and I don't think it gives you a clearer picture of who I am either. So, on that same point, I'm Jake. I'm 28. I've been listening to music pretty much my whole life. <laughs> but never consciously putting an effort to review it. Okay. This all changed on April 25th, 2023, largely in thanks to our Lord and Savior, Brad Taste and Music. On that day, I created my account on the Album of the Year website, and that was pretty much it. I didn't review anything, pretty much just left that account dead sitting there until a couple weeks later. And after those couple weeks, I would drop probably my most insightful review today on DaBaby's Call the Fireman, where I said, lazy and boring. This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. I know. Super insightful, very based take. Now, in that moment of putting that review, I really didn't put that much credit to it or anything or think anything big was going to come from it. But since that point, I have now reviewed over 700 singles, albums, EPs, just various different forms of music on Album of the Year, and I still keep going today. But rather than just look at some number go up on the screen or something like that, reviewing music has actually changed the way I approach and appreciate what I'm listening to. Quite simply, it has made me ask myself the question, why do I like what I like? Now, don't get what I just said too misconstrued or anything. I don't consider myself the most technical musical reviewer by any means. There are people who go in way more depth than me, and they look at musical composition and various other elements in greater detail than I do. If there's anything I truly believe in when it comes to reviewing music, it is that I think there is an inherent value you to putting your perception and your opinion on a certain piece of work out there for people to see. The reason being is that a album or a certain piece of music's greater cultural impact or societal impact cannot simply be measured off of a small population of people. It cannot be just the people who enjoy it, nor just the people who hate that kind of music. Hey there, uh, future editing me. I realized I really did not connect these two ideas coming up well together. Together, so I wanted to add a little bit more context into what I was saying here. In short, the more people you can get exposed to a certain piece of work, the better wide sense of reception you can get for that album. This was supposed to lead into the topic of why even bother spending time listening to something you know you aren't going to enjoy. Another thing I truly believe is that part of appreciating music you would not typically listen to is a practice. It is repetition. But by repeating submitting yourself to sounds you typically wouldn't frequent, you might not enjoy everything at first, but you could find yourself growing to appreciate some qualities you would not have even opened your mind up to in the past if you hadn't given it a listen. So to kind of spur a little bit off topic now, let's get into what do I even like listening to? It would be a fairly easy cop out to just put an overlay of my album of the year highest reviews page and say, this is it. This is the best music. This is the stuff I really like. But I don't think it's as simple as that. The reason I say it's not that fuck. The reason I say it's not that simple is because everybody has their different approach when it comes to rating music. Sometimes it's just a one word sentence and sometimes it's the entire mathematical formula that they use to calculate their score. Me personally, I simply go off a percentage of enjoyment, rate them track by track, average the score out at the end. However, scores can only go up to 100. They can't go higher than that. There's a lot of songs on albums that I don't consider perfect, but they might have some of my favorite songs of all time on it so that's why i would say it's not always as cut and dry as you may think it is but um let's get the elephant in the room out of the way huh? crash is the best album of all time and i will fight you over it 
Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Okay, jokes aside, I don't think Crash is the best album of all time, but it's a very important album to me. Simply, it opened my eyes up to various forms of music. One day, I was at a record store. The record stood out to me. I don't know why, but I had never heard it. I didn't buy it that day. Next day, I went to work, listened to Charlie's music, immediately went back and bought the record, and I haven't stopped listening since. Simply put, my first time hearing Crash, I had a huge question going through my head, and that question was, is pop music allowed to do this? I later would find out the answer is yes, and it's been doing it for a long time, and then that really made me question, what have I been shutting my eyes to for so long? Uh, for the next big boy, I figured I'd stay in a similar vein to Charlie and just hit you with the Caroline right next. So, this is Pang. This is a record by Caroline Polachek, and it was my first introduction to her work. Never heard Chairlift before, really didn't know anything about her. Simply put, I love the dreamy landscape this album puts forth, and it it might come off as a little bit of a weird statement, but I actually would fall asleep to this album after work many times. Not necessarily intentionally, I just would put it on on the record player, lay on the couch, and before I'd know it, I was just asleep. That is until it flips to the other side and I'd have to get up to change the record. And for the next one, we're gonna have a record that if you saw my Paramore ranking video, you would know I am a hardcore rider for this record. Typically when it comes to a specific artist, there will be one record that stands out over all the others, and that is the case for Paramore with After Laughter. Now, I've listened to Paramore since they basically came out. I was a little sceny weeny baby for a majority of my teenage years, and as much as I love the older stuff, I prefer the mature sound that you get on an After Laughter. Now, now do me a favor. Look at this track list, and you tell me what the best song is on here. And I'll tell you you're wrong, because it's this one. It's Pool. That's the best song. Fight me. And just to switch things up a little bit because we've pretty much been in the female singer pop bag for a while here. I'll actually hit you with something a little different, but very, very basic. By the way, by Red Hot Chili Peppers. If you find a picture of me from anywhere between 2012 to 2014, there is a 99% chance I am wearing a red Red Hot Chili Peppers crew neck in that picture. And I'm not even going to lie to you. At that time, I was probably about the fakest fan as I could ever be. I had a couple songs I really liked and I liked By the Way, but I didn't listen to Californication that much. I didn't listen to Stadium Arcadium like that, and I certainly wasn't going back to Mother's Milk or anything like that either. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm still guilty. I have basically sat and stuck to, by the way, through Stadium Arcadium and not really varied outside much of that, but I have at least gone back to sit through the entire albums. And yeah, Anthony Kiedis may be a bit of a uh, acquired taste, you could say, but I have a hot take to offer. If you enjoy the Beatles, but you don't like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, why? They basically basically sing the same nonsense. What, is it okay to talk about Octopus's Gardens, but you can't talk about Wamba Lamba Bamba California? I don't know. I don't see that many differences between them. And for my last pick here, just to give you a true insight to who I am, I went with the safest pick I could possibly pick. Oh my God, it's To Pimp a Butterfly. Look, I kind of was preluding to it a little bit earlier. There is a reason why To Pimp a Butterfly sits at the number one spot on collaborative ranking list among thousands on thousands of users across two different sites. This is truly one of the few albums that if you say this album is garbage, unlistenable, just the worst thing ever, I truly begin to start questioning your judgment when it comes to music. There are a lot of things you could say about To Pimp a Butterfly, and honestly, other people have probably said all the things I'm about to say even better than I can say them. But my two biggest takeaways ways from this album are the raw sense of vulnerability Kendrick portrays on the record and not being afraid to let his shell down. Basically let you know he is not a perfect person. And my second favorite thing about this record is that it forced jazz to be on the main stage for people to listen to that would normally not listen to it, including me. Sometimes I see people get very mad when a hip hop record, a pop record, whatever genre, recontextualize visualizes old sounds and tries to use them in a new way. And I've always found this kind of viewpoint to be very backwards because at the end of the day, there are a lot of people who are simply closed minded and are not going to put themselves into position to experience things they would normally not do. The more often you can force that on them, it will end up being a net positive. Okay, so that was me talking about a couple albums that mean something to me, yada, 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 yada. Now for the fun part. Let's see if I can make this work. 
Okay, so um, I have you here. Uh, you're with me on the Jake cam, and I'm gonna show you uh, around my room because why not, right? Okay, yeah, so you know, like, this is my room. Uh, this is where I make the magic happen. Look at that. Those are uh, those are pretty cool, right? Oh my god, I I listen to these artists, especially this one. He's my favorite. Oh look at it, I got more more junk. More stuff. I have all this stupid stuff. Okay, no, but th this is a cool one. You're, you're gonna wanna see this one. Ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, yeah. But Pokemon are pretty cool. And you know what? I showed you, you know, the records earlier. So let's just show you how bad it really gets. Oh, jeez. I especially don't get to show this one off as much, but I think this one's pretty cool. Oh, I also like to like um, collect like old video games or something like that. I don't know. If you don't know about this system right here, you're probably a little bit too young for me, to be honest. But yeah, um, that was me showing you around the house, showing you the random, ooh, random junk I collect. Um. I just wanted to end the video out, kind of saying my last little thoughts for what this channel exactly is going to be, what I want to do with it, all that good nonsense. So in short, this channel is really just an extension of my album of the year page. I probably wouldn't have made a YouTube channel if it wasn't for doing reviewing on album of the year, but now I do. And it started with reaction content, stuff like that, um, which... I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't really like the reaction content. It's fun when it's fun, but when it's not fun, it's not fun. And I can only imagine that when it's not fun for me, it's probably not fun for other people to interact with and engage with. I'm not blind to that fact. So uh, when it comes to reaction content, in the future, I'm really trying to isolate that to strictly live streams, which I did yesterday. And uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, it went pretty well. For, for my perspective, you know, I'm not expecting hundreds of people to be joining in or anything like that. But I'll take the four I got, and the four were uh, communicating, they were playing nice together, and you know, ultimately they got me to listen to some stuff I wouldn't normally listen to. So again, thank you to everyone who showed up, but I think as I go into the future, uh, reaction content is going to stay rather isolated to live streams. Um, unless there is a very specific thing I want to get a reaction in for, I'm going to try to stray away from that content. Now, when it comes to like reviewing and things like that, I honestly prefer doing it on album of the year because sometimes there's a record I listen to and despite me enjoying it a lot, I don't feel I have the most nuance to give to it, a unique take. I just enjoy it, simply as that. I am a, a listener experiencing the music and it's not much more than that for me. Now, if there was an album that really just got me excited and full of energy. I don't know, there might be one coming out in June or something like that that, that might get me in that that space. But uh, then I might do a more in-depth review on it through a video, but I'd have to have a lot to say about it to really want to go that route with it. But there is one style of content I actually do really like creating, which is the ranking videos I have done. Now, I've done these on Charlie, Paramore, Quideca, Frank, to varying degrees of success, but the one thing I like to note is I feel like uh, as I've made these videos, they have only improved um, and I only plan for them to keep getting better and better. And I much prefer looking at a artist's entire discography as a whole because if, I feel like it gives me a little bit more growth to really look at development and, and assess the artist as a whole rather than just one album they put out. So. I definitely see myself continuing with the album or artist ranking in the future. Uh, other stuff I'd like to start looking into is a little bit more like short form, not documentary style videos, but topic videos. Uh, one that specifically is on my mind, I've just been figuring, trying to work out how to put it together is looking at video game music. So not necessarily, you know, Halo 3 is a great game. Everyone loves Halo 3 and that soundtrack goes balls to the wall. Let's look at that soundtrack and see how it influences the game, changes the mood of it, etc., etc. The only thing is there's so many games that picking the ones to start with is kind of hard, but you know, I find myself kind of spinning in circles here saying the same thing over and over. So I think that's a good point to just end the video. Um, I appreciate you guys. It's been Jake. Keep an eye out for the next live stream, next upload. But with that being said, take care, man. It's still a great day outside. Go get some fresh air. Touch some of the nice grass on the ground. Take care. Love.